Okay. But you have more information than that. Okay. And when it comes to your acceptance, you accept the second one, not the first one. So you will get the marks. <laughs> of course, the teacher will feel, you know, upset about it. So it is good, the proposal will go to the teacher also. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, yeah. See, when I understand things, okay, I can see the people with not having right understanding will, are in trouble. So I will take care of that. Okay. I will understand that this teacher who is going to evaluate it is going to evaluate it on the basis of that Adam Smith assumption. Right? So I will write the answer on the basis of that assumption of Adam Smith. Right? But if I have to have a described, in a descriptive answer, I will write both. I will say this is what other message says. Right? This is another proposal which I have, you know, received as information. <laughs> but when I look into myself and find out which one is right, you know, for me, I find the second one to be right for me. This is what I would write. Okay? And when it comes to living according to it. I will certainly live on the basis of the second proposal. And what is the second proposal? The needs are defined. Needs, yes. They are limited. Each one of us can identify our need. And that's what we are going to do now, you know, this session. So just a word, I think the student is most probably to bound to fail. Mm. Because uh, by the time he answers two questions, <laughs> the time will be off. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, no, it will, he will not fail in the exam. You see, if you have this clarity, okay, you can write much faster than you can. Yeah, you are so confused. <laughs> 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 You know, you decide so much, you spend so much time even trying to understand the question. Right? It is not going to be all that difficult. Just see what we are doing today you know, in this workshop. Starting from 9 o'clock, going right up to 7.30. How many hours? Right? More than 10 hours. Normally, what is the, you know, kind of duration of the class? One hour. And we are running, going to, you know, are able to run it for nine hours, eight hours of class. And yesterday you are sharing that at 7.30 also, you are not feeling, you know, drained out. You are still feeling energetic. Okay. That means your efficiency can certainly go up. You are talking about things which make sense to you. Something which are relevant for you. <laughs> So you can certainly you know, answer things much faster than you do. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I am saying on this you can decide. If you think that you are running short of time, you will give me the answer which the teacher has come to assume to be true. But you must have the clarity that this is not the right answer. This is what is the assumption you may do in the society. So I can see the difference. I can respond according to you know, the the conditioning of the teacher. So I can do it, you know, in the prescribed time. That should be difficult for me. But then, if there is a possibility, I would also give the alternative option. But when it comes to my living accordingly to according to it, I will go by this, you know, proposal, <laughs> not by the assumption of deprivation. <coughs> So let's look at this, you know, and as, a, as the teacher also okay, you will find it will become much easier for you to share. Like in this technical university, we have introduced this in 2009. Many of the teachers who are teaching management, okay, now there is a big question for them, whether management by opposition or management by relationship. Okay. The students are also facing this question. The teachers are also facing this question. In fact, two of the teachers have, you know, <coughs> taken this as a topic for their PhD. And they are in it. You know. 
and interesting results are coming. In one of this, uh, uh, this is, they have tried to study, asking some question to the employees as to what makes you to stay in this particular organization. More money or better working environment, you know, in terms of relationship, in terms of other physical facilities, you know, and things like that. The maximum percentage, you know, of the people who have said that we are staying in this organization is because of relationship. Forty percent people are saying that we are staying here out of this, you know, environment in terms of relationship, okay, in terms of behavior of the boss and things like that. Some seven percent only have said that we are staying here okay, just because I am getting more in terms of physical facility. We have presumed that people are staying, you know, because of the physical facility only. So they have worked with some 20 such organizations and that is the reason. We asked, you know, some people, in you know, Triple IT for example, we have been doing this for quite some time. In one of the workshops, there were some 25, you know, staff members. So on the third day, after having discussion about the relationship, we only ask them to do one thing. Go and ask your you know, spouse that Triple IT is wanting to increase the work hour you know, by two hours every day. So instead of now getting free at 5, you will get free at 7 o'clock. Right? And it will increase your salary by 5,000 rupees. Ask your spouse whether they will prefer to get 5,000 rupees or, you know, your two hours more in, in the family. Very simple question to ask, right? Only one family said that you spend two hours more in the office but get 5,000 rupees more out of the 25 people, family. <coughs> so anyway, I mean, all these teachers will also start, you know, kind of uh, evaluating themselves. But till then, till then, you write what is supposed to be the assumption today. But you understand that this is not right. That is important. Because that is going to matter in your life. Because all these drugs and, you know, addiction and, you know, is taking place because you are not able to ensure happiness and prosperity for yourself. So you are taking to drugs, right? You are taking to depression, frustration, finally suicide. This is what is happening to our youth. Is it not happening? Okay. So this. Uh, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but uh, when I deal with my son, uh, every day, every day uh, he wants me to buy something for him. Then I always calculate and tell him that my net, net disposable income is zero most of the time. So I have to reprioritize some other areas and give him. And then if I continue to give him, then I may not have money enough to fill up my car. So uh, that has actually some sort of, I thought, convinced him. And that is the reality I thought that he has to understand. And then uh, doesn't get the wrong perception that his parents are rich. But uh, on the other hand, uh, then he started attacking the grandparents and the mother, uh, who, uh, who have not told him that uh, they don't have enough money. And then perhaps they have started, uh, they almost listened to him. So, but I thought uh, that was practical and reality, and uh, that would be a good way to actually make him understand the reality in life. But if he feels that the resources are unlimited, that is what, if now that is actually backfiring, now he is really, really getting the sense of deprivation. So I do not know if my strategy is correct, or sometimes if I just continue to supply him with what he, whatever he wanted, again there is some, uh, some negative implication also.
just, just would like to say. Yeah, you see, the important point is that are we helping him to understand his needs? Or we are just saying that we cannot provide you? Because our, you know, bus does not allow this. Or my salary does not allow it. So if you are not helping him to understand his, and identify his need, which we will do just now, you know, then he will feel at this will have the feeling of deprivation and it will not help in the long run. Okay, he will get into trouble and he will put you in trouble. So what is important is that he should be able to identify his need of physical facility. Right? And we will see whether it can be identified or not. Ah, nice. Yesterday afternoon we have seen a video the production and consumption, mm. but there was toxins in and then out, and finally it, it becomes a super toxin. <coughs> now while working on the homework, uh, like while walking to my home, I found that you know desires are coming in, the thoughts are coming in, so desires are coming in and becoming a super device. <laughs> <laughs> but I reached home, I sat for a while. Uh, I took a quick recap at, at my myself and I started working on this particular exercise. I found designs are coming in, then there was a filter. The filter was like, it's a body desire or the self desire? Is it a required desire? Is it an unrequired desire? And eventually the desires were not coming out as a super desire, but it was just disappearing. So I, I had a very uh, interesting and wonderful experience you know, while doing this particular exercise. And I found that the list of desires has decreased. <laughs> it has decreased. And most of these desires were basically, you know, sensations and the preconditioning, rather than uh, desires coming after the self-verification and uh, with, the, with the natural understanding. So, uh, like, uh, you know, like whenever I used to differentiate uh, the needs and the wants in the classroom, I think I have more clarity on that particular point. Because I always used to say that the wants are unlimited. But now I can make a statement that the wants are limited and can be achieved. Yeah, that's important to know. Many such things will start now. A downing upon each one of us. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm saying it is very practical. <clears throat> if you start looking to yourself, all these, you know, things you will be able to sort out. And unfortunately what is happening, the whole society is dumping so much into us, the parents, the teachers, the peers, this, you know, televisions, right? And we are just helpless. We have become helpless victim of all this dumping, you know, into us through preconditioning. If we become aware, we will see what all this we have accumulated here and what all is worth, what all is not worth. Okay. <coughs> So this is about the first question, both in terms of being practical or in terms of the implementation. So I must conclude saying that the implementation is, of course, going to be a tough task for each one of us, right? Because first we have to work with ourselves, then our, with our relationship, then with the you know, education, and then finally with the whole society. But it is necessary to do because what we are doing otherwise is far more damage. So we must start, start with this clarity in ourselves that we have to do rigorous work with ourselves, with our own behavior, with our own conduct. Then we have to work it in relationship, then in education, then in the whole society. So we may start all these levels, at all these levels, but with this clarity that finally, you know, I need to work with myself as long as I am able to do it with myself and it makes a change in my behavior, in my work, then only it will be reflecting with others. So have this <coughs> and then work with everyone else. So that is what I would say, you know, regarding the implementation. Lot of others will come in between, but then if you are sincere about it, you know, the ideas will also come how to overcome.
rather than I giving you the ready-made solutions to all these problems will come in between. Okay. I think it will, you know, you will have enough ingenuity, enough creativity to take care of those problems. I can certainly mention some of those which have, we have already you know, come across and then we have been able to take care of them. Okay, so this was the first question. The regarding the question of Dr. Sharab, um, <coughs> You see, uh, when we look at the uh, tradition, we have to be very uh, careful. Because what has happened is that lot of isolation has taken place between the people who are proposing you know, these uh, practices and the common people. So that, you know, has to be understood properly. Then, with respect to that, what is being said here has to be understood properly. So, let me uh, take this issue of this notion of self. What is being said, you know, in um, the uh, Buddhist uh, thinking is that if you look at yourself, Most of it seems to be constituted of what is dumped into you by the society or by the sensation. Right? And therefore, it is not the real self. There is a very typical word in the called Maya. Illusion is Maya. The literal meaning of Maya is. Yeah is what, you know, whatever. Ma is no. So what is not there and you have assumed. That is the meaning of religion, that is the meaning of Maya. So the basic issue is that you have taken yourself to be something which is it is not. So if you look at this now. What is happening? What you think in terms of self is this today. And most of it is coming from preconditioning or sensation. So this is what you are. Which is not what you are. This is not your real self. Right? This is accumulation of the preconditioning from the society or sensations from the physical world around and you think this is what you are. This is the delusion. Right? This is not your natural self. And you think this is your self, right? One is that you are not aware of yourself. That's the first thing. Okay? Even if you try to be aware of yourself, this is what you think you are, right? Which you are not. That is the literal meaning of Maya. Something which is not there and you have assumed it to be there. Right? That is the meaning of religion. Now, this is the way you are you know, working and this is what you are eating, which you are not. This is not your natural self. Now, what we are saying here is that as far as that statement is there, it is correct. Correct in the sense that because you have not done the sense investigation, self exploration, self verification, this has been accumulating in you and you think this is what you are. But then you can investigate into yourself, understand yourself, understand what is natural self for you. If you do that, that is what we are trying to do, you know. We are trying to find out our natural acceptance. Whatever is our natural acceptance, if my desire, thought and you know, expectations are falling in line with that, that is going to be my natural self. That is going to be my real self. With that self, I will be in a state of happiness. Therefore, this happiness, this continuity of happiness, which is called as bliss, 
is a natural outcome of my natural self. So it is not that the self is not there. What is being said is, what you think is the self, is not the self. It is not the real self. Right? It is a delusion. Then what is the real self, is what we are trying to investigate. What is the real self, is what we are trying to investigate on the basis of our own natural acceptance. What is naturally acceptable to us, is what is our real self. And that is the part and parcel of my being. I can look into it, I can investigate into it, I can understand it, right? And that becomes the guide for my desire, thought and expectation. If that happens, then I am in harmony with my natural acceptance. So that is harmony with it. And therefore I am in a state of happiness. So the nature of the real self is to be in a state of happiness be in a state of bliss. Right? All this unhappiness is caused because these things have been dumped into you and you have not been able to really verify them. Right? They have become part of you and they have become the source of unhappiness for you. Mm -hmm. Source of all contradiction. Right? Source of all problems. So what we are saying, we will have to identify our real self. So what is real in us, what is not real in us, has to be identified and that we are doing through our process of self-exploration, through our process of self-verification, right? through asking this question whether it is naturally acceptable to us, not naturally acceptable to us. So any desire, thought, expectation we have just accumulated from outside without making this verification and which is not in order, you know, accordance with our natural acceptance, then it is creating problems. That is the source of unhappiness for me. And therefore, this unreal self or this delusion about the self is what is creating problems. But then it does not mean that the self is not there. Right? What you think is the self is not the self, real self. Right? We have to find out our real self. Right? When we find it out, we are no, in a state of bliss, in a state of happiness. <coughs> and that is what we need to do. That's the basic, you know, thing that is required. And if you do that, the outcome of this is the right understanding and right feeling. That's all we have been telling right from the first day. You know. If I have the right understanding, right, which is here, on the basis of my self verification. Then I have the right feeling, which is here. <coughs> then I have the right thought, which is here. Then I have the right expectation. Therefore, I have the right behavior and work. So this self will find, you know, in its natural state, and there will have the state of happiness, state of peace, state of harmony within. And that is what we want to achieve, you know as a human being. And that is the meaning of that continuity of happiness. <coughs> so it is necessary to find out the real self and not just be with the unreal self or the deluded self or delusion about the self. <coughs> so you can see this Delusion does not mean that the thing is not there. Delusion means I am taking thing for what it is not. That is the meaning of delusion. One very common example which is quoted okay. is this, <coughs> that if there is a piece of you know, rope lying somewhere and you take it to be a snake, okay, this is delusion. 
but then does not does not mean that the rope is not there. The rope is a real thing, right? When you take it to be a snake, this is delusion. The rope is real. The snake is also real. Right? Then what is that I need to do? I need to understand the rope. I need to understand the snake. If this happens, I will not have the delusion. Very simple. So rope is a real thing. The snake is also a real thing. Right? If I understand the rope, I understand the snake, then I will not confuse this rope for the snake. So I will not have delusion. So when I am having a delusion of a snake in the rope, it does not mean that the rope is not there and the snake is not there. That rope is not the snake. So if you look at the cell, this is not the real cell, which is born out of this accumulation of the preconditioning and the sensation. This is not the real cell, and that is the whole trouble. What is the real cell? To understand, you know, my natural acceptance, okay, on the basis of this having the right understanding, then on the basis of the right understanding, having the right feeling, right thought, right, this is the real self. So it is not that the self is not there. It is not that this self is what we have, you know, taken it to be. So if I understand this self, I understand this preconditioning, I understand this, you know, sensation, okay, then I can understand the real self. I can also get rid of all this which has accumulated all around in me. Take this question first, then come to the Sangeet's question. Uh, I will uh, go back to the example of a rope being perceived as a snake. <coughs> and then the rope, when you see the uh, rope as a snake, then the, this is a delusion, which you are illusion. And then the, the reality is that this is a rope. And uh, from the Buddhist point of view, that it is neither. Because there is still as a self which is seen as a rope. The very self which sees it as a rope, as a snake was a delusion, and then the seeing as a rope uh, is also not a real. The reality is the self is not existence, but is an illusion. Because of seeing that rope, it makes you as a stronger as a self that you are seeing that as a rope. If that rope is, if you understand the reality of that existence, the very perceiving that rope as a rope by the self, that itself is the illusion. So I think that's, that's, that's where that I fail to understand, especially when you say that the happiness, prosperity and a continuity by having a desire. By having a desire is because that you, there is a self as an I, very strong. That's why we have a desire. Then the happiness and then the prosperity. <coughs> yes, in the one lifetime I feel that uh, uh, from the birth to the death, that you can see that there is a happiness and prosperity and the continuity based on the uh, concept of the self and then the body, the whole existence. But uh, from, the, uh, from this point of view, Still, if you are to believe for the rebirth and the continuity of the illusion of our self, then the continuity is in the portion of that continuity in the concept of the self and body consciousness. This is a little difficult to understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is why I have put forward this proposal. You know? And I would expect you to, uh, you know, kind of uh, look, at, look into it uh, deeper. This issue of the real self okay, and the issue of the deluded self. You can also find out, look into yourself, whether you are there or not there. So that's, <laughs> that's a very interesting thing, you know. Because after all, it is you who is trying to understand things, right? 
is after all new, right? Who is getting confused right? and want the clarity? All this is there. So therefore, you are there. But I will not insist that you are there. I will leave it for you to find out. Whether you are there or not there. So, I will, you know, just leave it.